Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everybody around the world. Welcome back to another One Piece video featuring your boy, Rosanante. Get ready for a very, very spicy deck list in which I'm very excited to bring to you guys. Let alone, this is one of the most versatile leaders that I've played in a very long time in this card game. Due to the fact that you have decks out there such as Reiju, Sakazuki, Gekko Moria, in which generally consist of the exact same build, just different ratios. Now mind you, I am coming up with a Animal Kingdom Reiju here on the channel relatively soon, so do stay tuned for that, which is actually going to be pretty fun and quite exciting. But other than that, a lot of decks in the format, especially meta decks, are one and the same, with just slightly different tweaks here and there, right? Whereas decks such as Blurple Kaido, Rosanante, OPO6 as Yamato, they can be built in so many different ways due to the fact how flexible they are, and they can still perform very, very well. Yamato, for example, right? Now, Rosanante is a leader that came out in OPO5, which has been underrated since release, still is underrated now. This is not a tier 1 or tier 2 deck, but is a lot of fun and can beat a lot of pretty meta leaders let's just put it that way now considering all these different cards are here we're going to talk about this a split second before we dive into my list this is one of the most flexible leaders in the format like i said so it can be built in a lot of ways be it that you guys can play with the bonnie with the bonnie with the baby five engine if you want to to make sure you're fleshing out your kids make sure you're getting your doflamingos down there's so many different builds that you can do here and do fine now, without further ado, you guys have noticed that we have all these different cards here in which can be included inside of a Rosinante deck. I'm going to talk about it real quick before we dive into my list here. If you guys are interested in playing with Baby Fives and with Jewelry Bonnie, get the double searchers off to make sure you're able to find your kids, your Doflamingos, your other bodies, feel free. It's a very solid list, and I think a lot of people are also playing this deck kind of like that. But again, it can be built so many different ways you don't exactly have to just go that one that one way right so for me personally i play a lot of queen so i try to i try to come to rosanante with that mindset of how do i play queen but a different style with green considering the fact in opo6 we just get the new sanji uh sanji attacker which is a very 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 good card so we play a lot of eustace kid in rosanante which it kind of makes sense right if you're at 10 dawn you're at 9 dawn or what have you you can kick a kid off the top of your life or top of your deck sorry to play it on board attach a dawn he's ready to block you got a body for a 9k swing as well on top of the kid which is really really good mind you this can kick any card in your deck that is a nine cost or less other than sanji so this can play down mihawks it can play down borsalinos you can get down your blockers such as diamante or x -Drake. you can even play Armaki. There's so many different ways that this deck can be built with the Sanji and without the Sanji. Today we're gonna dive into a list that I created with Sanji in mind. So I do hope you enjoy it. Without further ado, let's take a peek at it and see what we got cooking up. Currently, we decided to go with a Navy package here. We did not run Baby 5, we're not playing with Jewelry Bonnie. Again, very good choices, you can run them if you want to. I'm going to play around with Tashigi, Sanji, a Navy variant, in which something that I don't generally see. With the inclusion of OPO6's Tashigi here, she allows you to search the top 5 cards, grab yourself a Navy other than herself, and you're chilling. Because it allows you to grab either one of your 10 2k counters, be it your 4 Garp, 4 Suru, or 2 Gions, or she can draw into your curve, be it your x -Drake, grab yourself some Rosinante blockers in the early game, Borsalino, or Removal. Both of these are very huge pieces in this deck and in this format. Now, in any case, like you would play Queen, you run the inclusion of Corona, Doflamingo, X-Drake, and there is one more, there's one more card, and I always forget his name. This guy, Duval, I guess you would say. He's okay, I just feel like you don't need him. You know, realistically, because I'd rather play down like a Sugar or a Rosinante instead of, you know, spending two down to play this guy. But, you know, each their own. In any case, I come at this as I play Queen. So, with that being said, with the Dofi, with the Perona, with the Extric, you're wanting to stack your deck in a way that you guys can get value with the Kid, 
with the Mihawk, with the Borsalino, in one way or the other. You just got to keep in mind that a lot of the time, they're never ready for Kid. You're not going to be playing against a lot of blue decks out there, so the Red Rocks are kind of going to be less and less. And with Yamato running around with Fortress builds, this card is a nuisance to everybody. So why not include it in Rosinante? There are some lists that already run it, but to be able to play Sanji into the Kid is a huge tempo swing in your favor. Let alone if you want removal, you can drop down the x to bottom deck something, especially if you're playing into like a Raju matchup, considering the fact that anytime you kill a card in a Raju deck, it just gets brought back. So this is why we also included in cards like Borslino and Raging Tiger. This is a very, very strong card right now in the format, especially considering the amount of Gekko Morias you are going to play against. The amount of Peronas you're going to play against. If you are if you kill that card, it just goes to the trash, and then Gekko Mori just recycles it. Well, with Raging Tiger, you can get rid of them, and not have to see them again. For a while, anyway. The same thing with Borsalino. Now, of course, they can just Ice Age, and then Absalon, and kill this. Sure, no problem. This is why I decided to do the split here. If I do decide to take this out, I'll just be adding in more Raging Tigers, but I do like this. Because not every match you can play against Gekko Moria, and he does have value, realistically. Now, we have other cards here, such as Gion, which is the 2k counter. That doesn't get a lot of play on field, but into certain matchups, such as Nami, this is a very, very solid card. So if your locals consist of a lot of Nami players or what have you, do you know think about including a Gion into your deck if you are playing blue. Because it allows your opponent to hurt themselves, essentially. When they activate an event so there's that that's another way to deal with nami especially if you run into it with rosinante and then we've also included in two yamatos this is a very very scary card for a lot of decks to still deal with right now and it's very good into yellow mind you we have cards such as reject which is a very very strong card and it's going to be getting banned in opo 7 but for now katakuri Enel, some yamato list here and there they will be running this. So on your curve into you know your five dawn, if you don't have extra or you played him previously, you could potentially get down a Yamato and then get a double attack off, which is great. But you just gotta be reminded reminded of removal such as reject, uh, three thousand worlds if you're running into a blue deck. And if you don't know what three thousand worlds does, it is a very, very scary card for four dawn, it allows you to bottom deck a five cost or less. So there are just certain cards that can remove this, especially on play. You could also see problems into Gecko Moria and Perona with an Ice Age and removal. This is one of those cards where if it hits the board, kind of like Kuzan, you got to remove it instantly, right? But if you got your blockers down and they don't have any form of hard removal, and this gets a double attack off, it can be detrimental to decks such as like Enel, Katakuri, all that sort of thing. But in any case, this is the list in which we're going to be playing with today. I do hope you guys enjoy it. Remember to smash the like button. Make sure to subscribe for your content when it comes to One Piece. Let's dive into some games here. I'll see you guys in a split second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Dive into a bunch of games today. I'm not sure how many we are going to do, but I'm going to try my best to get out of here within, you know, an hour or so. I've been playing for a while today. I've come across a lot of variety of different decks, considering the Structure Deck 13 is coming out. And I have dodged a lot of decks I don't want to play against, such as Katakuri, Sakazuki. Those are the main two, like, like really. Other than that, I don't really care too much on what I've been playing against at all with Rosinante. Just to the fact how strong those two are against this deck. But I digress. Utha is a very, very powerful deck into this leader as well. So, eh, we'll try to get this one out of the way if we're able to. They're able to keep a very good hand size, let alone swarm the board with units. So now I did keep a greedy hand here, which is all right, right? We, we got a bunch of blockers in the early game. We got our extra curve and two big bodies with the kid and the, the Mihawk, which is fine considering we have a way to remove the seven drop Luffy. And this is something that I am going to be mulliganing for when it comes to green Uta. And this is a deck you guys will see in OPO7 let alone in EB01 when they get newer cards. So do be mindful of that. If you're into playing Rosinante, key pieces you do want to have in your hands is, is a Mihawk at the very least and a Dofi or an Extrake. 
That way you guys can stack your deck. But we'll see how this one goes. I'm going to take a lot of these hits. Not so many, but I, I'm okay with going down the two life in the early game. As long as I have blockers on board. That way I'm not threatened for lethal with I'm Invincible. This is a pretty solid one right here, actually. We could go ahead and draw into this and then bottom deck both of these cards. But I kind of want to wait to play Raging Tiger in case they drop a Nami on board. Hold up. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They go up to three, four, five. They go to seven Dawn next turn. So potentially we need to have the Mihawk ready for that turn. I want to make sure we have the Rosinante in hand as well. Maybe one or two before we drop our kid. I'll pass it up here anyway. Oh, they got nine cards in hand right now. Four, five, eight. Eight cards. Okay. One of the best things about this, though, is when you get the kid down on board, Uta kind of, kind of becomes a little bit irrelevant, considering the fact that when they swing for six to do their leader effect they need to put more down on Uta to be able to hit the number right which is great for me because that basically slows down their investment or establishing bodies on board block out with extra here as well there's no reason not to I don't want to take the hit here for free I told you two life is cool that way they can't threaten I'm invincible and just go for game oh yeah yeah we'll do that I forgot about they drew back light earlier. That's my bad. There's a law. So law's probably gonna bounce the Onami, not the Onami, but the Nami that they drew off the leader effect, which is fine, right? Which is okay. We can clear board here with leader and extric and be all right. We have eight Dawn. We cannot attach a Dawn to the kid, but we can still do some pokes here. There's no way they guard for this, so. I mean, realistically, I guess they could have with the amount of cards they have in hand here. Hmm. I think getting down the kid is probably the better option. Because I think they'll probably play down their uh, Luffy here on this turn. I think I should be safe. It'd be a little weird if they decided not to play Luffy, if they have it in hand. Let's go ahead and do the kid thing, and I guess we'll get down the Rosinante. But if we do do this, they can just attack into it with all the Dawn investment and not play the Luffy. But still, this is probably the better play. Because we get the restand leader, we can take the attack if they have to, you know, stack all Dawn and attack the kid. Because I want to keep the Rosinante alive as long as I can. Oh, I like that. That's pretty good. I do like that. I did not think they would do that with the law. I thought Law would play down into the Nami, and then he would just do the Luffy thing, but that was pretty smart. Real big brain there. Was that another backlight? Alright, fair. Yep. Hmm. So they're gonna kill this, and I have nothing else to do with it. Because they're gonna arrest me, or what have you. I mean, there's nothing else I can do about it. They're gonna take him out anyway. So that's gone. Regardless if I if they were to target the x rake or not, then we would have popped the Rosinante. So I just smart for them to just remove it regardless. This is 8k. Hmm. We'll get rid of the 1k counter, I guess. Because we know we're gonna draw into another one. Now they can't swing at the kid, which is nice. I'm going to save the Mihawk for now. Let's go ahead and do the Raging Tiger. We'll bot deck this and the Usopp. Because if they decide to swing it with the Mihawk, we can attack into it. It's cheaper. We can save one Dawn for the Perona. Actually, no, we can't. We need the Dawn on the kid. Mm-hmm. I'll do the thing. We could rest it and play down Perona here, or we can just go 9k. I think it's better just to go 9. I'll pass it up. So now I'm starting to feel like they're gonna play Luffy here. 
there's we don't run into a dofi problem at all because considering our leader just restands itself and now they have to stack more dawn on the leader to actually get off an attack here which makes perfect dawn for luffy to come down there you go two dawn up there you go they draw another luffy which is a problem Counter out of this one. And we get another kid. Let's go, boys. I mean, we knew that was coming, so. Go nine here. This should be guaranteed. So they have seven in hand. One of them we know is a Luffy, so they have six cards left in hand. Five cards left in hand. And this is why I think Kid here in this matchup really just shuts down this deck. Even though they can run Kid as well, but still. There goes a 2k. And now they have to invest. Oh, never mind. Alright, alright. You're going for it. We'll, we'll take this one. Oh, you love to see it. Do you have another one? Oh, okay. Alright, that's fine. We'll guard out here as well. And this realistically should be game. Because I could drop another kid here. We can have double kids on board with the Rosinante or go for game. You know, this is one deck right here. I don't see that often as of late. I feel like Perona is not as popular as everything else. And with the the new starter decks that are coming out as well, I think she'll probably even go even lower than that. I know she's a fan favorite character, but hey, man. Even at my locals, which we consist of 30 to 40 people every given Sunday and Tuesday, it's just... I don't see it played that much. I don't know why. Fun deck. But I know for Rosanante, we're going to have some trouble here. Because they can just rest all of our blockers and do the thing. So x Drake is going to be very, very strong in this matchup. Anything that's a 5-cost blocker and above. Mm. We can go 6. Or we can just double attack with Perona and Leader here. Which I'm not really... Mm, against doing, I guess. Borsalino. Oh, heck yeah, I would do it. Why not? Sweet. This will force her to kill Perona. With leader swing or another card. Nice. Five Don open. Okay. Interesting. Well, there's our removal piece for Sabo. Let's go six. We'll get down an extra. Gives us another Borsalino too. Love to see it. Mm. Let's put these on bottom actually. None of these are really good currently. That's a lot of 2k counter. I need to find at least another big body. So like a kid or a Mihawk would be great here. We have another extra and Dofi to do the search again. So we'll see. I just don't want to take too much damage in this matchup, but I need to have big bodies on board. Other than just x Drake. Let's guard out, give a 2k. I don't think they'll swing with Sabo, so I think we're fine. Or they'll just play another Sabo. Okay. Sure. What's the other card? Okay, so there goes a Dofi. So my guess is they already have one in hand. We could bot deck both of these. Like, that would be bad. But I, I want to search up. Ooh. Actually, this is kind of gross. I'm not going to lie. We get double Mihawks back to back. Hmm. Yeah, that's nice. That's real nice. We can't rest the Sabo. But we can stop whatever he decides to play on board for the following turn. And we can still go six to face here. So I still get a card out of hand. Yep. Let's go six again with x -Rake. Sweet. Okay. What does she do here, guys? Okay, they rest sugar with leader ability. That's fine. She's still active, so... We'll rest the Sabo here. I think we're good. 
All right, funny enough, they forgot about Sugar's ability, I guess. They didn't realize it works when Sugar is rested. And every time I feel like I play with a Sugar in one of my deck profiles or videos or whatever, I always make sure to tell you guys, Sugar's effect is always active no matter what. So, unfortunately, they didn't know that, so that, that, that that's on them. But yeah, Sugar does die to Ryuma, unfortunately. They are swinging with Sabo. So we can give out the 2k here if we want it to, but it's rather just take the hit. I don't mind going down for 2 life. Especially when I know what cards are coming up next. Let's do the thing. Let's get rid of the, the Kuzan. And now we can try to clear these Sabos for free. Yep. We'll just run both extra and Sabos here. So either... A Dofi or Ryuma was in hand during that scenario, or something else that didn't have counter power. Otherwise, they would not have let those go. So now I think we're chilling for the rest of the game. So here comes the Dofi down. I don't think we care here. Let's go ahead and guard out with the 2k. Here comes the Dofi. Mm -hmm. Another Mihawk. We knew that was coming. So realistically, they do 2 damage to me next turn. We could bottom deck the Ryuma, or we can play down the Kid to make this a little bit safer. Attach the Dawn here, do the thing. I think we choose no targets here. Let's we'll go 6. Let's clear this. She should have counter in hand now, yep. So beforehand she didn't have counter, otherwise the, the Saba would have still been on board. And now we just go 9. We've got 1k in hands, 1 blocker on board, so kids should be dead here no matter how I, how they play this. Let's take the hit. So now we have 2k counter. There's no way you play another Dofi. At all. You clear the kid here. Realistically. I think they have to go 10k. Or not. Alright ladies and gentlemen, here we go! Almost forgot to hit the record button. In any case, we're playing against an RP Uta, so this is going to be an off-meta thing versus an off-meta thing and see how we can do. This is one of those decks in which I feel is you're really coping on the Uta being great. I'm not going to tell you she's complete garbage, I'll leave that for you to decide whether or not we win or lose here, it is what it is. but. I feel like the deck itself needs a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say work, but love, I guess you would say. It needs more cards for it to be relative or viable and all that sort of thing. But in any case, we're going to try our best. We're playing Diamante, not Diamante, Rosinante here. So, let's see what we can do. Now, I do know that, yeah, there it is. I do know they play Shanks, which for green decks, uh, it's a very scary card. It's a very scary card. Because it allows him to pop Kid for free when, when Shanks hits the board. And it's a 12k body, so... RP Uta kind of plays a lot of blockers that are kind of recyclable. So, you gotta be a little bit mindful. This is a really, really good here. This curve, actually. 4, 5, 6, 7. It's 4, 5, 6. Yeah, 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 this will, be, this will work out. Uh, I kind of want to draw... No, we already have one in hand here. Hmm. If we do the Yamato, we have one in hand, but it, if we can get one to stick on board, we have a double attack banish, which is scary. Let's do it like this. In case we can use one for a counter of some sort, we know we're going to get another one. So, But in any case, this deck does play a lot of blockers. Shiki, though. Hmm. Very early to play that. Speaking of blockers, here comes another queen. And besides the Shanks, Uta, the leader effect herself, makes your kid a 6k, so it can swing over kid. This might just be like a counter matchup for you, depending on how you draw and how the Uta draws, realistically. Counter out with the 2k here. And drop down this. We'll go 6k first. Let's just go into the queen. I know they're not going to let the queen go, so I'll at least get a counter from it. 
if they decide to play anybody here whatsoever other than a blocker, we'll just rest the queen, and then perhaps we can get a double attack in with the Amato. Cool. This will work out just fine. Three Dawn open, that gives them enough Dawn to play a Shiki down if they have another one. Of course. Hmm. We do have the Uta, though. It's a little greedy, but we're going to go for it. This comes at me for six. They can minus 2k for something here. Unless they're going for sugar. Oh, they are going for sugar. Okay, that's fine. Um, Do we really mind? Consider we have the other sugar? I think that's okay to let it go. So we get the kid. But I think we want to go for the double attack. We can rest that and attach Dawn and go for it. One of the best things about this card, it already has Onami built in. So, guaranteed, which is nice. We can attack for five. I don't think we'll get an attack in on the, the queen. So we can realistically go for leader or just kill the other blocker. Let's go seven. I, don't, I want to, but we're not going to get this. Let's just go for this here. We can do another damage to leader, but this will also give them a card in hand. And I don't know if they have another Shanks, so... A little, a little scared, not gonna lie. Because Shanks will immediately just pop Dofi. Or Yamato, or whatever. That card is so good. Comes another Shiraya. Another very, very busted card. Especially if you're a Yamato player and you see Shiraya on the board. Good luck. 9k here. I don't really want to take this hit, but I don't want to let it go. We have another one in hand as well. That's just, yeah, it's fine. It's okay. Six. Hmm. Sure. Nice. Um. No, 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 no. We won't use it. We won't use it. We can just double tap the Shreya and the Queen on the following turn. I know it sets us back a little bit of playing the, the kid. But I think we are already in a good spot. That we don't have to worry about it. And then we can clear the Tesoro with our leader effect. Our leader swing. Yep. See, we're looking good, boys. We're looking good. And I think right now this is the downside of, of Uta. Considering you discard cards, you know what I mean? You don't really have a hand half the time. Let's bot deck this as well. I don't want them drawing anything. Let's go six for free. And now we're chilling. Until they draw the shanks, I think we're fine. Because shanks would just kill the Mihawk, and then they have a big body in which I can't block out with leader face. With my leader. So. Another 11k, man. You guys are you're pushing. Yep. What's the point of minusing the, the Mihawk, though? Oh, okay, smart. I get it. Yep. You got it. That card is so good. Alright. Hmm. Let's, let's do the kid things. Let's do kid's ability. Play down a Rosadante, and then we can swing for six here. Or a Dofi, actually. Get an x -Rake. Sanji. Let's draw the X Drake. We can play down our Sanji to get the kid on board. And we can just go from there. This will work out. This is fine. I don't think they can do anything here. I think we got this one. Oh, okay. Hold up. I mean, they play really well, I'm not gonna lie. They, I mean, they do the thing. That was a lot of cards we got to see there. What did he get from that, though? Raise max, okay. So five into me. We'll counter out with Yamato. Nice. Okay, let's get the Sanji down and get another kid on board. And, uh, see how gross that is, though? And you can just hatch a Dawn to it and be like, yo, hit me. It is so cool. 
I actually think we could just go for game. We have to clear both blockers on board, but I'm pretty sure this is game here. They still have to deal with the kid. We have two zero cost events in hand as well with double blockers on board. So we should be chilling. We can't kill him here, but next turn we can. Okay, or not. Yep. I wonder why they got rid of the max. Okay. That's fine. Because the max would actually help out a little bit of removing the kid. Right? Because now they can't swing. I think I might have played the max there. Maybe. To try to remove the kid or something. At least get an attack in. But overall, they played really, really well, to be fair. And this should be game. Good job, buddy. I guess it's about time we actually sit down and play one of these new brother decks, to be fair. I've seen nothing but Sabos and Aces the past couple days. Or sorry, uh, Luffy's. I have not run into an Ace deck yet. And I've noticed each Sabo deck I've played against has always been, like, very different. Perhaps people are still trying to get the feel on what it does and all that sort of thing, but... Every deck has been a little bit different, which is kind of cool. And in, in any case, let's go ahead and stack this deck real fast. We are on, we go to turn 5 next turn. We have we have X-Drake in hand, and I'd rather do down the X-Drake opposed to the Yamato. I do think Yamato is going to get value here in this matchup, because they don't play a lot of hard removal. So that's a possibility, but we'll see. Kika Nojo down on board as well. Which is a problem, considering the fact they can just bounce it back to life. Because it was Kikyo, I would assume they're playing Hiori as well. But I could be wrong. Like I said, a lot of these deck lists have been, like, a lot of different variety, if you will. Got five. Let's go five to face. See if he blocks with Chopper or not. Okay, he takes it. Love to see it. Let's get down to x -trick. Ooh, there's a Mihawk, though. Hold up. Yeah, this is beautiful. Let's do it like this. Because we can draw into the Rosinante, then Mihawk. Yeah, yeah, this will work, this will work. Or we can do it like this, though. Because we don't have anything to play on the following turn here, on turn 7. That's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, this will work. So we can get down Yamato the following turn, which is nice. It might be a little greedy. There's a Hiori. Okay. I, I'm guessing you would bounce the Kikyo here. I should attack first with it, right? Yeah, there you go. Good job, buddy. Okay. Seven. We can block out, give us 2k. He's probably going to run into the X-Drake with Sabo here. That's five. I don't mind taking a couple hits, but we're going to guard out some of these at the very least. We'll take this one, of course. Or we can block with Dofi. See, we're still healthy. We, we got Yamato on board. We're chilling. We got Sugar in hand to rest the Hiori as well. Let's go five into the Nami here. It's also kind of scary too, considering the fact they leave one Don open. They have so many good events with the two colors. So let's get down Yamato. Let's play Sugar down as well. So we clear the Nami. I don't think they'd play Momo in this variant. I could be wrong, considering they are playing Wano. It's a possibility. Ooh. Luffy's kind of nice. But not necessarily like a problem. Let's rest this instead. Because otherwise it can just take that to attack into the sugar. Luffy's not really doing a whole lot. Because the top card of their life is a Hiori and... Sorry, a Kikinojo and not a Luffy. So, let's just do this. I still think we're chilling. There's the Luffy. Alright. It doesn't get unblockable, though. Let's go ahead and block here. Yep. 
You killed the X-Drake, right? Okay, all right. You know what? You can have it. Good job. I don't know. I'm confused, too. But uh, say hello to Mihawk. Get rid of that. Let's double attack here. You can definitely counter. Yep. Let's go five into the Hiori. And now next turn we should be able to do double attack banish with Yamato. Because right now we can guard out with our leader in X-Drake. Very much, at the very least, we can do our leader, right? To be fair. As long as she stays alive a turn, we're cooking. That's a lot. That's one way to do it, but uh, we'll take face. That's fine. Ooh. Sure, why not? And uh, I think this is a good game. But they have two Dawn open. So there could be some guard points and some other shenanigans. So let's just stack up. Let's stack it. Let's go for it. I think this is probably the best way to do it in case they have like guard points and something else. So we go 13k to face. Get the double hit in. We have two Dawn open to play down Rosinante as well. Let's go five here. Get another card out of hand. There's a guard point. There's another nine. Wow. Okay. Anything else? No? Good. Sanji. Of course. Of course you would. Alright. We're cooking today, boys. We are cooking. Uh, how do we remove this? If I remember, we had multiple Mihawks, right? I think we had three. So we should draw into one on our following turn. Or we can just banish the Sanji off of life here with Yamato. So that seems a little silly. I guess this is what we're going to do. I'm not sure why they decided to put that back up there. Because they won't get the value with Yamato on board, so. Unless I'm missing something. Bye. Alright, the 9k. Good game. We'll probably dive into maybe one more game. I'm not going to lie, I do hope this game is not going to be super long. I asked them if they wanted to play this match out. They didn't respond so far, so I'm not sure. I'm here for it. Alright, guess we're doing it. Hopefully we get out of here within under 20 minutes. This is a queen match versus Rosinante, so this is going to be a... Uh, yeah, we'll see. See how it goes. In any case, this is going to be our last match of the day with Rosinante. I do hope you guys enjoyed it thus far. I've been spending a lot of time with this build, and I do plan on taking this to locals at some point coming up here in the future. Because again, I'm having a lot of fun with this leader, but... There's a lot of other decks here in the format that I do want to experiment with, and I did mention it earlier. Raise you, Animal Kingdom, it's coming. I'm going to have a lot of fun with it, but I will put up another poll soon and see what you guys want to see. And it looks like there was a lot of interest for Kuro, so he might make another return on the next poll. But it all depends on what you guys vote for, so we'll get into it. In any case, Queen is going to have a hard time into my Rosinante here. Especially if this queen player allows my sugars to stay on board. If you guys don't know how this works, most of the triggers that queen plays generally are a lot of blockers, which is fine, right? Because if I do attack them, they get a blocker off trigger, sugar can't rest it. Great. But what sugar does rest is any card that queen puts on the board. Considering the fact that if Rosinante, we can just block into the sugar to make sure she's good and just rest everything else. We're chilling. So they're going to need to see some 3000 worlds, raging tigers, or impacts to remove my sugar here. At the very least. Or potentially, not even, yeah, not even rushing out would help. I guess Gadetsu could be a thing. But I don't really see Queen running Gadetsu. And I don't normally use it, so each their own. Duval is going to get rested by Sugar. We can attack into that as well. 
I want to make sure that I'm stable enough to have, especially kid, early in this game. Now, whether or not they have red rocks, that could be a problem, but we'll see. We do get a Yamato here. I know this is going to be a risk, but let's do this first. Let's do 1k into that. Yep, to let it go. Five a lead, and we're going to play down Yamato here. I probably should play X Drake, but if this sticks and we get a double attack off, this game's over. Just one hit. But it might be asking for too much. Would be cool though. Yep, cool. Unfortunately, they had Raging Tiger. And I cannot guard out for Sugar here. That does suck. Well played, well played. I'm just going to assume they drew into it last turn or whatever. We get down to Kid. Let's rest it up with Rosinante. Go five to face. We can restand our leader here. You take this hit, right? Oh, okay, all right. I get the veggie. All right, that's fine. Five, six, seven, eight. So they have eight cards here. When I say eight, it's because I'm counting their life too. For however queen works, they need four cards combined with life and hand to make sure they start healing. So. Getting Yamato down already. I cannot bottom deck the Yamato with our Mihawk here. So that does suck, but we are able to get two bodies on board. And I probably should have put that on my, my kid. That was my bad. Hold up. If we attack... No, 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 no. Because if we attack, he just stacks everything on Yamato and goes for a kid, right? And if that fails, he just does the rest of the Dawn on Queen. And then I would be taking two hits. I don't know about this. I think it's better to just pass. Because the moment we swing... Yeah, let's just go for it. The moment we swing, I think Kid will die the following turn. But then again, I guess we probably should have in case he has Red Rock here, right? Yeah, maybe we should have attacked. We got two, four, five, six. Yeah, I think we should have attacked. We have 6k counter in hand. But I think I went too fast and I put the Dawn on Rosinante, not thinking about it, and I should have put it on Kid instead. So that was definitely my bad anyway. Hopefully that doesn't cost us the match, but we'll see. Misplays happen, it is what it is. 9k, you don't heal, so... Let's take the hit. Ooh. You yeah, have a rest of the Dofi here. The one time that event comes in handy. The one time. The clutch moment. Oh, okay, never mind. Get another blocker anyway. It was smart not to attack with the Yamato there, because we were just going to clean board, so... Let's go 9 to face. Sure. 5 to face as well. 3, 4, 5. Clear this. Is it worth attacking him though? 3, 4, 5. He, he gets 6 cards next turn. For one that he gets that he draws. Realistically, you can play down probably one of them and not both and not have enough to gain life. So I think we are okay. Let's do the kid thing. We have just enough. We'll pass it up. Our board is terrifying. Like, for any deck to play against, this is oof. Real spooky. The downside, like... Oh, he's playing Sanji too. I love it. Heals the life. Well played. Can't pop anything though. I mean, now you got a pass turn. Yep, you can't heal. You can't hit anything. That's crazy. Either way, he decided to play that with the Sanji and the Yamato. He still gains one life, right? So it doesn't matter if he decided to attack first or not. If he played down the Yamato after he attacked, 
again, it, it wouldn't matter because he has too many cards combined with life in hand. And I think this should be game here, unless he gets more triggers. Can we not get a Beji though? Please. We want to move on. Uh huh. I think we're okay to go for game here. We have a lot of counter in hand. Let's go eight. All right, we'll stack everything on Sanji and go for it. This is another 14K. I think we're chilling. Nicely done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate everybody who decided to make it into the end of the video today. It's, this was a lot of fun for me to actually sit down and dive into. I didn't think there's going to be a lot of people who are very interested in Rosinante, let alone who very much like this leader, but I was wrong. I appreciate you guys, man. This is a very, very fun deck. I do enjoy it. This is just not a deck that uh, I typically dive into too much, because again, I didn't think the, the love was there for Rosinante, but I appreciate you guys, man, for actually giving this leader a shot at your locals and or you know, your every day. This is a lot of fun to play. Very versatile leader. can be built in many different ways, so I do hope you guys enjoy it let alone changes to this deck that I would, would be making. There's so many things that you can do, but I will start off with saying that I did not get a lot of value with some of these cards here, be it Borsalino. I do think he's very, very good into certain matchups, and this is one of the reasons why I did include him, just because into decks like Raise You and stuff, you can bottom deck a lot of problem cards in the early game, which is really, really nice. But if you choose to take this out and add in more 2K counters or what have you, feel free. This is just one of my variants of Rosinante that I've been enjoying with thus far. I do hope you guys can share your spicy decks down in the comments below for other Rosinante fans out there. Help grow the community and all that sort of thing. But currently, this is, has been a list in which I've been cooking up for a little while now. So I do hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know what your thoughts and your opinions are down in the comments below. We'll talk about it and all that sort of thing. We have locals coming up here on Sunday. And I'm thinking about diving into... One of my Enel lists and doing a bunch of games on that. If not, I probably will be playing Yamato or following week I might dive into Perona. Haven't decided yet, but we'll see how that goes. I don't necessarily want to play too much like Gecko Moria or all that because it's it's meta and it's it's kind of boring. You know, eat the own for people that like it, but you know, whatever, man. Perona at least has a little bit more variety that she can be built what built with. Let alone, she's not necessarily top of the top. You know what I mean? She's like smack dab in the middle. She's kind of fallen out of popularity. You don't see her that much, but hey, we might dive into that here soon. And I do have to do some updated decks here on the channel, in which I have a Perona list that is going to be using Hody Jones and Arlong. So do keep in mind for that. It's going to be pretty spicy. Without that being said, I will be playing with some more Reiju here, Animal Kingdom, coming up soon. I want to dive into a Blurp Hokkaido build. But for some reason, all of you guys chose Rosinante. And I can't be mad. I can't. I, I really much enjoyed this deck. But Blurp Hokkaido, Reiju, Kuro, they will all make another appearance here on the next poll. So again, choose what you will. And we'll go about it that way. Either way, this has been Paul's Blaze. I will catch you guys at Locals and or in the next video. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys later.